Today is the 5th of April, 2011. We are in Margaretville, New York at the American Legion Post. My name is Wayne Clark. I'm with the New York State Military Museum in Saratoga Springs, New York. Sir, for the record, would you please state your full name and date and place of birth, please? Uh, Willis Robert Marks, date of birth, 731-22, Margaretville, New York. Did you attend school in Margaretville? Yes. And uh, <clears throat> what year did you graduate? 1940. And did you go on to college or did you go to work at that point? No, I went to work and college after my service. All right. Do you recall uh, where you were when you heard about the attack on Pearl Harbor? Uh, watching a football game, I believe, it's, I think. Uh huh. Then something I connect with the New York Giants, uh, okay. football or, or Washington, I'm not sure. But, but it was radio, I'm sorry. Radio, radio. yeah, radio. I was going to ask you okay, about that. Radio, <laughs> yeah. no, radio, yes. All right, so you went into the... Uh, Army in September of 1942? Correct. Did you enlist or were you drafted? I enlisted. And why did you pick the Army? Well, I joined the Marine Corps originally, mm -hmm. and I took all the physical, and then the recruiter said, oh, I forgot something, and he brought out the colorblind oh. charts, <laughs> and I found out I was colorblind, and I couldn't see those big dots, and, and uh, so he said, I guess guess I, we don't need you, and so but I was anxious to get in service, yep. I guess, so I just joined. And uh, where did you go for your basic training? Uh, Camp Seibert, Alabama. Hmm. Now, was that your first time away from home? Well, let's see. Well, basically something like Boy Scout camp yeah. and those things, but probably. Well, for a long period. Well, when I worked in Bendix, I, and I was in Sydney, New York, so I was... Okay. That was after high school, so I was All right. Grown, yeah. Now, what was your basic training like? Well, it, it was chemical warfare, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I was trained in originally, and uh, the story. Okay. And now, what did they teach in uh, uh, chemical warfare? Well, basically, the use of the gas mask and, and uh, the, the mortar system, the chemical mm -hmm chemical warfare mortars and uh, D did that include fl uh, flamethrowers at all I don't remember flamethrowers no okay. I don't I just don't all right. follow that but uh, I don't know it's a long, you're asking me something that okay. happened a long time ago <laughs> uh, no. all right anyway. so that was your that was your basic training basic yes did did you go on to an advanced school after that? Yes, I was assigned right out of basic training to a to a chemical warfare company, mortar company. It was already formed, and they were taking advanced infantry training, getting ready to go overseas. So, I was the last one in the company. And that, now, was that at the the same camp? Yes. Or? Yes. All right. And uh, <clears throat> when did you go overseas? Do you recall? Yeah. Uh, it was August of 43, something like August 5th or 6th. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And how did you uh, go across? Uh, on an English ship, and we uh, had a chance to taste English mutton on that ship, <laughs> that, which, which was, did not thrill me at all. Uh -huh. so, now, uh, do you recall the name of the ship? No. I just know it was English. It was an English crew. Yeah. And uh, now, did you get seasick at all? No, 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 no. I lived on candy bars, I think. Uh, I was gonna say no. the mutton didn't make you sick. No, I didn't eat much <laughs> of the mutton, believe me. And I, I don't eat lamb today as uh -huh. a result of that. So. Okay. No. All right. And whereabouts did you land? Um. Liverpool, perhaps. I, I think it was Liverpool. Is that? Okay. I. You know, yes, right. I, I believe it was Liverpool. Now you were you were already part of the 90th Infantry. No, not at that time. Okay. No, no, that came during the bulge when they. Uh, the story was as soon as the bulge came, and then they started looking for people who had had some infantry training, mm -hmm. and I was a low man on the totem pole with no rank, so. Okay. I got I got picked to be the. 
that was around Christmas time in okay. 44. What, what did you do between the time uh, you had landed and be between that time and when the bulge started? Not, not really that much. We were just prepared in case the Germans use chemical war warfare. Okay. And so, we, in all honesty, we didn't have much to do. We just followed in back of the, in the infantry and mm -hmm. sort of, I don't know, they found some jobs for us to do, I guess, but okay. we, we really didn't. We were just hanging there in case, in okay. case there was a by the time By the time of the bulge, though, you were with the 90th. Not when the bulge started. I, I went into the 90th. Just to say, around Christmas, Christmas, maybe a few days before Christmas okay. of '44. All right. Yeah. And what was the bulge like? Cold. What about your clothing and, and equipment? Did you well, they issued us extra, extra clothing equipment, but uh, you know, you just you just couldn't keep warm. Yeah. Just, did so. you have a sleeping bat bag or blankets? Well, we, or? we had a shelter half and blankets. Yeah. And uh, and got a chance on occasions, if it warranted, they let we would if we're taking a town, we could go inside and take a house and sleep yeah. inside. But we we still had some cold nights. And, mm -hmm. yes. Was the bulge the first time you you saw action or came yeah. under fire? Yeah, um, <clears throat> except maybe earlier, maybe mortars or or artillery pieces that would come in, but. There was nothing ever close mm -hmm. when, until I got in the infantry. You know. Okay. And what was your life like in the infantry? Well, Did it change drastically? Well, I'm not sure what you mean by that. It was it was just a case of survival. Mm -hmm. we, you know, you so cold, and that was that yeah. was it. I mean, what were you uh, living in foxholes? Well, yes, mm -hmm. if, if we could dig foxholes, yeah. but. You, they, after we got moving, we were moving so fast that you didn't have time to That's dig, what I was going to dig foxholes. Were you constantly this, on the move? This is J Patton's idea. I uh -huh. want you to move so fast you don't have time to move to uh, dig foxholes. But we did some. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, yeah, yeah. What about uh, what about food? What did you exist on? Uh, K rations. K rations. K rations. K -rations yeah. Well, occasionally the, the the company cook would. Come up, and we'd we'd come back for in reserve for a day or something, and then the kitchen would come up, and we'd get we'd get hot food then. Mm -hmm. But uh, but uh, basically, it was the K K rations. Mm -hmm. So you you basically spent the winter on the move. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We. Were, and then, of course, later, later, as soon as the breakthrough really took place, we were we were really moving. And, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. and where were you at that point? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it was. I'm trying to think. Luxembourg or some. I'm not too sure if it was part of France or Luxembourg. You you never knew sure. where 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 you were. You know, it was mm -hmm. just land, and uh, and uh, you just little. Supposed to take some little town or something. Mm -hmm. that was it. What, what about uh, casualties? Did did your unit suffer? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Heavy casualties. That's the way I became having no rank when I entered, and then I I became assistant squad leader shortly because of my experience, and then later on uh, uh, squad leader. Mm -hmm. Now, did you? Uh, Squad leader without a rank. Okay, I was going to say, without did you a rank, did you advance beyond PFC? No, 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 no. They never. They said, well, as soon as we get get organized here, this is what the officers would say. We'll give you, we'll give you your rank. But none, the the three of us and I company that were squad leaders were all just privates. Mm -hmm. and never. And never, n never, never got never got the rank that I know of. And I'm sure that the, the other two didn't. Mm -hmm. The ones that I had the best friendship with. Yeah. Were, were you uh, ever wounded at all? No, no. I I suffered trench foot and frozen feet a little yeah. bit, but uh, no. I knock on wood. I came close several times. But, mm -hmm. uh, Any you mentioned the the frozen feet. Has that bothered you in later years? At well, all? my feet are always closed, cold, cold now, so I'm assuming it was a result of, uh, of 
that, that experience. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but it was kind of a joke. They'd say, change your socks every day or something. Yeah. And that was, you know, kind of a humorous thing to mm -hmm. tell you when you're in combat to make sure you change your socks every day. So, how, how often did you get a shower and a change oh your clothes? God. Showers? Boy, I don't know. Not, not, not very often, yeah. I guess. I couldn't, I have no recollection actually of, it was all part of living, I guess. And, uh -huh. uh, but, uh, no, I just, I, I just, I, I couldn't tell you when we took them, when, when we'd go back on reserve and maybe then, then there yep. might be a shower, but uh, the thought of a cold shower didn't, didn't appeal to me that much. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, uh, where were you during the spring and summer? Were you still on the move, or? Yeah, we were moving fast in the, yeah. in the spring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just taking one town after another and cleaning them up and mm -hmm. make sure that there are no Germans there. That was our basic job. Mm -hmm. Now, at that point, were you went to Germany at all? Oh yeah, yeah. We, okay. Um, I can't. The only city that I that I recall, like we went through Aachen, which mm -hmm. was just over the German border. We took that town, and I remember going through the, uh, the 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 Siegfried Line. I remember that was an experience. Mm -hmm. Going went through that, and uh, and a few things like crossing the Rhine. That was a big. Oh, what was what was that like? Did you? <laughs> that's 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 the story. Uh, a kid in my squad, when we had taken the city of Mayence on mm -hmm. the Rhine River, yep. and uh, uh, this kid found where the uh, Germans had stored all the confiscated French champagne, and he came back and told me. So I, I and a few others went down there and loaded up on champagne. and. Uh, and the orders came back at two o'clock in the morning or something. You're, we're crossing the Rhine River, and we threw away blankets and shelter halves, and just and just kept the just kept the champagne. So <laughs> that was that was that's a GI for you, you uh -huh. know, doing doing things like that. Now, did you uh, meet any resistance at all? Not not crossing not crossing the Rhine. Some of the other river crossings, we uh -huh. just, we we were shelled and some some close calls, but. Uh, now, did did you ever did you ever see any of the concentration camps at all? No, no, no. We, did did we, you know about the existence of them? Gosh, I probably not mm -hmm. until later. Probably not, and, and I could have. I don't. I just yeah. don't recall that. It doesn't seem to me as if we we were aware of that mm -hmm. when, when we were there. So. But, now, uh, advancing through Germany, how were you? How were you treated by the civilian populace? Um, I don't think, uh, certainly not bad. There was no, there was no resistance from, from the German people themselves. If we would, if we would capture a town, we, of course the first thing we do is everybody go into homes and make sure there are no Germans there. And the order was any, any arms had to be out in, in plain sight. So we went in. And, and I remember going into one place and found a nice German pistol, the Luger, there, and uh, I kept that as a souvenir. They let you mm -hmm. let you take them. And, you still have it? Well, that's that. That's another story. I gave that to my grandson-in-law, uh -huh. and uh, and actually I had two. Uh, it's near the end of the war. We had a formal surrender. Uh, a one of the um, Armored divisions, German armored divisions, had a formal surrender to our to the 90th in, in Infantry Division, mm -hmm. and we met at a certain place and and you, you rode the, the German vehicles to a certain spot. And I yep. and I, after my squad was on, I got on a half track, and uh, rode in with you know all alone, you know, but it was perfectly safe. And the one German at least spoke Eng English, and he gave me a, another pistol, a, a Walther's pistol, a brand brand new one right out of the box. So mm -hmm. I came home with two, yeah. with those two two pistols. And, yeah. Yeah. 
Now, uh, what about uh, surrendering surrendering soldiers, German soldiers? Uh, uh, did, what did you do? Just tell them to go down the line, or? Uh, yes. We did, we didn't ask what what happened. Well, this is if if there were a large contingent, you know, they, then they would go in and. Then, Someone from headquarters would take care of that. Yep. But if we were out and on patrol and just going down, and there was a straggler here and there, or one on a motorcycle or something, that unfortunately, bad things probably happened to to, to them. Mm -hmm. That's that's war, you know. So, mm -hmm. but uh, okay. Now, uh, towards towards the end of the war. Uh, Let's see, Roosevelt, I believe, died in April of 45. April, yes. Do you remember how you heard about that? or No, no. How, how did the guys react to the news? I don't think there was any great reaction. I don't know. Yeah. I just, I cannot recall the time or any, any, anything like okay. that. I just, I just, okay. you know, we were aware of it somehow. So, but okay. Do you recall where you were when... Uh, the war in Europe ended. Yes, we were in Czechoslovakia. We had moved into a, a little small town just over the border into Czechoslovakia. Mm -hmm. So yes. And, and what were you there doing there? Were you pursuing the, yeah, we're the just, Germans? I guess we just maybe didn't, we didn't know where we were, but anyway, we stopped. Mm -hmm. And uh, I suppose word came down to the higher officers that it looks as if the, the surrender is. Eminent, and yep. so we could. Uh, we just didn't. We weren't doing much at that yep. time. So. so, when you got the word that the war was over, or at least in in Germany, was there any kind of celebration at all? Probably had a bottle of something we celebrated. <laughs> a bottle with. of leftover champagne. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, the <laughs> champagne was long gone before <laughs> then. But, uh, but uh, no, no. Boy, there was some of the some of the. Some of the drinks were pretty strong, too strong for me. Yeah. Uh, some of the snops and stuff. But, uh, but mm -hmm. when, you, when you're there, you, uh, you you do as in Rome, do as the Romans do. We were there. We did as Americans would do when when it was available. So I guess. So. Okay. Yeah. So you were in Czechoslovakia when the war ended. Yeah. Um, what what happened? Did you stay there for a while, or did you move on? Or? Oh, I we probably did for. A matter of a few days or something. And then we went back to a base in in Germany mm -hmm. that had was assigned for our our division, and they already had that worked out. And we we went back into barracks. And now were they like it, it was a German ins installation? Yes, I, yes, I believe that there was a training <clears throat> training grounds for the German okay. army at one time. Was there any plans to send the uh, division? Oh, yes. to, to Japan. Oh yes, we were we were training yeah. for something you know not too much, but to keep us active. And they were, yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Now, how much longer did you stay in Europe for? Were you well, there when the war ended? I, yes, and as soon as the war ended, I had I, I was a high point man. I had something like eighty some points, and that and they. They started shipping us right out immediately to to other companies that were going going home. Some of the first mm -hmm. ones going home. So yeah. I was fortunate. I I didn't have to stay there very long. I went with a I don't know signed with a tank company or something. It doesn't make any difference. But yeah, or just to they were they would take those with the high point and uh, put them all in one unit and get and go back on the ship. So. Did you leave out of France? Yes, we left. From La Havre. Okay, was that uh, where they call Camp Lucky Strike? Or? Yes, yes, exactly. Yes, okay. that was it. Yes, yeah, that was okay. Camp Lucky Strike. Yeah. And uh, when did you get back to the states? Do you recall? Oh yes, that's a story that I tell everybody in my life. I got back in Boston on October fifteenth, which was my mother's birthday. Yeah. I called her. I went to Fort Dix, got discharged, got back here on October 22nd, which was my father's birthday. Oh. So, you know, how do you, how do you plan that any better? So, yeah. What was it like uh, 
uh, pulling into New York Harbor? Uh, well, we, we pulled into Boston. Oh, Bo Boston. Boston, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't, I just don't recall anything special about yeah. Boston Harbor, just the fact that we were home, you know, yeah. this was, this was it. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So you were discharged and yeah. headed for home? Yep, discharged on the 20, 22nd, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, at that point, did you uh, take advantage of the... Uh, 5220 Club? Probably did for a while. Yeah, I think so, yes. Yeah. I must have for a okay. while. Yeah. And did you, did you make use of the GI Bill at all? Yes, yes. I got a degree in business administration from through ICS. Are you familiar with that? International I, Correspondence I've School heard, in heard Scranton. So I was working and then getting getting my degree at the same time. So. And what type of uh, job were you doing at the time? I was postmaster at that uh, time. Okay. That was when it was political. And, yep. Yep. Okay. So, so after I got my degree, then I, and I also got, um, um, besides the that, I got a real estate license and became a real estate appraiser, and then later on bought an insurance agency. So, mm -hmm. so you kept very active. Yeah. Yeah. Now, did you stay in contact with anyone you were in service with? Yes, yes. One particular other uh, squad leader was lives in Phelps, New York, or did up until, well, maybe about a year ago, and he passed away. And my, my other best friend uh, was in Glenwood Springs, Colorado, and as they offered him, offered all of us, a chance to go to OCS and stay in service, uh -huh. he took it. And was and was killed in Korea. Oh, so, so that was, uh, yeah. so he was my best buddy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Now, did you uh, uh, did you join any um, veterans groups like the VFW or the well, Legion? The Legion, sure. Okay. And it was sixty-six years in the American Legion. Wow. So. No, I've I've been post commander, county commander, and district commander. Mm -hmm. Did you attend any kind of unit reunions? Yes, no? yes. I've been to a couple of 90th Division units. We were when, uh, <clears throat> where was the one in, uh, sorry to say Houston, Texas, but I don't think it was Houston. Uh, I don't know, my mind is going blank here for a second. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, yes, we did go, and I met some of my friends there. We planned a trip there, so okay. I did that. And I, I go to the... I would go to the county conventions and the district conventions here, mm -hmm. but uh, in this area. So. When you were overseas, did you uh, ever attend any of the USO shows at all? I, any don't, I don't remember see, seeing many of them. <laughs> they weren't coming out in the combat area very, very fast. Uh, I probably, boy, that's, I should remember if it was. I never saw anybody like Bob Hope or uh -huh. anything, and, and none of those shows. Okay. But I just, I just can't recall. Just mm -hmm. can't recall any any of the shows. Can't did Did you get to spend any time in Paris at all? Yeah, it's, well, we went back a little bit and uh, saw that. And uh, the biggest thing we had was after the war, my buddy and I got a furlough to the French Riviera. Oh. And uh, that's where they had. Taken over the French hotels, and they had, they they the Americans would supply the food, and it was all free, of course, and to uh -huh. us. And once we got down there, and we we ate and drank a little champagne and celebrated. Uh -huh. That was in July, I think, in July after the war. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. And. Uh, how do you think your time in the service changed or affected your life? I don't think there was any drastic change in my life. I guess you appreciate things more, mm -hmm. appreciate the fact that you're here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that, uh, do you think you would have uh, got your college degree had it not been for the military or oh, yeah, the yeah, GI Bill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Is there anything else uh, you'd like to touch on? Maybe we left out. Or um, any experiences that uh, come to mind? 
No, I just, I, I don't talk about any, the real tough, tough times. Sure. And there was one time, one thing I told my family, and that, that's it. So. Uh huh. Any, but, but any, they, any humorous uh, stories? Oh uh, gosh, <laughs> humorous stories. Must must have been some humor along the way, but uh, uh, it's just springing this on me. Um, probably after I go. I'll say, oh yes, I remember okay. this incident, but I, I okay. just, it's not coming to me right, right now, anything very, very humorous. So. All right. Well, thank you so much for your interview. Okay. Thank you. Okay.